starts with D and ends with C. That's dress. Clark and Gamble's Sudsing Miracle, 2,000 years newer than soap. Dress brings you the life of Riley. <laughs> Dress, D-R-E-S-T, Dress, America's largest selling brand for washing silks, nylons, woolens, dishes, presents The Life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. <laughs> Chester A. Riley is a man who is willing to make any sacrifice to make his children happy, but uh, just between us... The children would be a lot happier if Riley didn't try to be so helpful. Tonight's episode begins with Mr. and Mrs. Riley entertaining their neighbor Jim Gillis at dinner. More coffee, Mr. Gillis? Don't mind if I do. Yes, sir, I sure appreciate this here invite to dinner, Riley, old pal. But I hate to put you and the missus to all this trouble. It, it really distresses me. Well, Gillis, for a man in distress, you sure knocked off those eight meat poles. <laughs> Yeah, but I had to force myself. So do you think you could force yourself to eat another piece of pie? Well... Oh, go on. Have some more pie, Mr. Gillis. Okay. I'll have just a trifle. Uh, a large trifle. <laughs> I don't know how you do it, Gillis. Until I seen your jaws in action, I never knew the meaning of perpetual motion. <laughs> the way you shovel in that food... Oh, you stop th- your kidding, Riley. Mr. Gillis might think you'd be scratching the food. Oh, no, not me. I know good old Riley loves to feed a hungry friend. He's got a nice, big, tender heart. Well, stop drooling, Gillis. The meat course is over. <laughs> you two. <laughs> the way you ride each other. Regular children. Say, <laughs> yeah. uh, I take note your kids ain't present at this here festival, boy. Well, Junior went camping with his boy scouts, and Babs is having dinner at a girl's house. Gee, it's getting close. I hardly ever see Babs anymore. It's a good thing I got her picture in my lunchbox. Well, where's she eating, Peg? At the Bidwells. Who? The Charles Roscoe Bidwell? Why, yes. Hey, Riley, you know who this here guy Bidwell is? No. He owns the bank. He's a big shot in society. Well, what do you know? Our little Babs in society. Eating her way through the upper crust. (laughs) (laughs) Not exactly. It's just that Helene Bidwell is in Babs' home economics class at school. See, the girls learn how to act as good hostesses. Each girl has to give a dinner for another girl and Professor Cartwright. Uh, who's this here Professor Cartwright? Well, he's the mathematics teacher. He's the one who judges the girl's cooking. He's a bachelor. Well, that's no excuse to poison a guy. <laughs> Next Monday is Babs' turn, and she's invited Helene and Professor Cartwright here for a formal dinner. Yeah, but don't want to be kind of crowded. This kitchen ain't very big. The kitchen? Riley, are you nuts? You can't ask a Bidwell to eat in the kitchen. Why can't we? This is where we eat. But, Riley, what's the dining room for? To listen to the radio. Anybody knows that. (laughs) Why, of course we'll use the dining room. Now, could we please drop the subject? Don't forget, Riley, the Bidwell's is big shot. Believe me, I'd know what uh, what to do if their daughter done me the honor to dine underneath my humble roof. Well, it ain't your humble roof. It's my humble roof. And it ain't humble. It's shingles. (laughs) Well, I think it's nice for Babs to get around and meet important people. Mr. Bidwell owns the biggest bank in the city. So what? He owes me money. Thirty dollars. I got a bank book to prove it. But, Riley, don't you want your daughter to meet the right people? She met the right people the day she got born in our family. (laughs) Well, she got something there. (laughs) Oh, my goodness, what on earth is that? Hey, look, it's a Cadillac. It stopped right in front of your house. A Cadillac in front of our house? Must have run out of gas. It's Helene Bidwell. She gave Babs a lift home. She might come in, Riley. Do something. I don't want her seeing you looking like that. Well, can I help it? This is the way I look. You can't fight nature. <laughs> I mean, put on a tie. Yeah, Riley. And what's your grammar? Don't never use no double negative. <laughs> uh, fine thing. My wife don't think I look good. And my friend don't think I talk good. I bet Dad's ain't ashamed of me. Where is my tie? You're using it for a belt. Oh. <laughs> now, it isn't that I'm ashamed of you, Riley, but I met that Helene once, and if you ask me, she's a bit snippy. Well, then I don't want Babs running around with her. Yeah, my tie's on. How's it look? Well, you can take it off. Doesn't look as if Helene's coming in. Well, then I'll go out there. I want to give this Bidwell kid the once over to see if she's okay for Babs to know. Riley, now you better stay here. Oh, and he's forgotten his coat, and he's wearing those awful purple suspenders. 
Give me the coat. I'll bring it out to him. Oh, dear. I hope he doesn't say anything that'll embarrass Dad. Don't worry. I won't let him. I'll do all the talking and monotonize the conversation. <laughs> well, thanks for the lift, Helene. Hello there, honey. Oh, hello, Daddy. Helene, may I present my father? Charm, Mr. Riley. Simply charm. Pardon my glove. Pardon my bare hand. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. So sorry to interrupt your dressing. Oh, I wasn't dressing. Daddy, you forgot your coat. No, honey, I just took it off to eat my dinner. Oh, Riley, I brought your coat. Put it on. If you know what I mean. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Say, that, that sure is a nifty car you got there, Miss Bidwell. Uh, oh, this old thing? Yeah. I've had it almost six months. Oh. <laughs> well, if you throw it away, let me know where you throw it. Uh, How's about a knockdown to your friend? Oh, Helene, may I present Mr. Gillis? James Madison Gillis. Oh, of the San Francisco Gillis? No, the San Quentin Gillis. <laughs> Daddy, please. I'm sorry, Mother can't come out to say hello, Helene. She must be occupied in some household matters. Uh, yeah, she, she's up to her elbows in dishwater. <laughs> Daddy. Riley, this charming little lady will take you serious. Well, we're just plain people here, Helene. So when you come to dinner, don't go expecting no frills. Really? Uh, sure. Our motto is buy some good food, cook it up tasty, throw it on a table, and every man for himself. <laughs> That's done. Since you evidently have no servants, do let me send our staff over to help you with your dinner. Oh, no, Helene. When I give a dinner, I want to do it all by myself. Yeah, and you get a square meal, too, Helene. You could use some meat on your ribs. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Why, what did you do? <laughs> oh, Daddy. Helene, you will come, won't you? I wouldn't dream of missing it for the world. I'm sure it'll be quite a novelty. Oh, by the way, Beth, what are you going to wear? Why, uh, this dress, I guess, is my best one. Oh. Then I'll wear something old, too. <laughs> How about? Oh, what a sniff. You evidently have no servant. Leave me send over our stiff. <laughs> well, don't worry. We can throw a party as good as she can. Ain't that right, Beth? Bad. Gillis, where'd she go? She went into the house. The poor urchin. <laughs> no doubt she's in her room, crying her eyeballs out. Well, you you, you think maybe it was something I, I said? I, I was I was only trying to be pleasant. I'll tell you what you did. You disgraced her. Helene's a dame that's got class, breed, and culture. Who'd you think you was talking to? My wife? <laughs> Well, gee, I, I, I didn't mean... I, I, I was just... Oh, oh, I'm always doing things like... Why did she ever pick me for her father? <laughs> Bad. Bad, honey. Oh. Oh, hello, Daddy. Bad, listen, I... Well, you ain't, you ain't crying, are you? No. I... I've got something in my eye, I guess. Oh, that's good. Uh, that, 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 that you ain't crying, I mean. That that dope Gillis thought she was crying. Well, I'm not. No, no, I, I see you ain't, honey. Uh, what are you not crying about? <laughs> if it's about having them people for a feed, stop worrying. We'll toss a party that'll make their eyes pop. Of course, I'm, I'm just a plain fellow, but... Daddy, stop saying that. Huh? Stop apologizing for yourself and us. We're just as good as anybody. Well, sure. That Helene, telling me she'd wear old clothes, too, patronizing me. I'd like to smack her. Now you're talking like my own daughter. And I'll take a poke at her old man, too. <laughs> and what's more, I'm through doing business at his bank. I'll get my blotters elsewhere. <laughs> the way she acted at her dinner tonight, practically swooning over everything Professor Cartwright said. She made me feel 
feel like such a dummy. He'll never look at me again. Oh, yes, he will. We'll have him here to eat, see? And he'll have to look at you. We'll put the meat platter in front of you. <laughs> Daddy. Yeah? Do you think we can get away with having them to dinner? Why, sure. Your mother will be around to kind of bring you luck with the cooking. And for this one time, we'll put on some dog, too. Whatever those Bidwells did, we'll match them. Oh, Daddy, we couldn't. You should have seen their dining table. Well, we've got a table. <laughs> Ours is gold and oak, and they have mahogany. Oh, well, it, it, it won't show. We'll put on a bigger tablecloth. <laughs> Daddy, they didn't use a cloth at all. Just cheapskates. <laughs> Saving on laundry. Oh, no, Daddy. They have individual table mats and lace doilies and silver candlesticks. Yeah, I'm marking it down. One mahogany table with lace doily mats. Daddy, you're not going to buy a new table. We can't afford it. Nothing's too good for my family. Only probably I can rent one. My friend, Prop Fazuli, has very swanky furniture. He rents the movie studios. Go, go ahead, baby. What else? Well, after dinner, they serve coffee in their library. I'm marking it down. One library. <laughs> but, Daddy, we have a What's a library? Books. Okay, leave it to your old man. What else? Well, after coffee, Helene said, shall we have a rubber of bread? I could have killed her. She knows I can't play bridge. Oh, me neither. Well, I'll get a hold of some other game to play. What else? Well, of course, Mr. and Mrs. Bidwell weren't at the table with us, but they dropped in later. Well, your mother and me will drop in earlier. We'll keep dropping in and out. Because <laughs> we'll be waiting on the table. Oh, oh no, Daddy. It's wonderful of you, but I'm not going to have you waiting on table. Why not? Your mother and me will only be too happy to do it, even without chips. <laughs> It just isn't right, that's all. You shouldn't do all this for me. Look, baby. Someday when you grow up and have kids of your own, you're, you're going to realize that there's nothing that makes parents so happy as doing things for their children. And when the children actually appreciate it, well, that's parents' paradise. Oh, you sweet daddy. Tell you what. You and Mother come in after dinner like the Bidwells did. Oh, they were so nicely dressed. Mrs. Bidwell wore a dinner gown, and Mr. Bidwell had a dinner jacket, and, and they sat around chatting. I'm marking it down. Chatter. <laughs> now, now, Bed, don't worry. Your dinner's going to make a big hit with Professor Cartwright. Oh, Daddy, you're wonderful. We'll show him. This dinner will have everything that rich people got, plus the one thing that all poor people got. What's that? Appetite. <laughs> We'll bring in the second act of The Life of Riley in a moment. Meantime, Mrs. Ken Carpenter, with an invitation from Mrs. Riley and millions of other delighted housewives to join the march to dress. All right, let's go. Dress, dress, dress your dishes and oh, how they shine. Shine without wiping in half of the time and look bright. Right. So don't you get left, get dressed. Yes, get dressed, and your dishes will shine even without wiping. Dress, Procter & Gamble's sudsing miracle makes even glasses sparkle, towel or no towel. Now, that's the remarkable difference between dress suds and soap. All soaps leave cloudy streaks on dishes unless you polish them. But dress suds rinse clean, leave dishes sparkling as crystal. And with dress, it's goodbye dishpan grease. It seems to disappear before your eyes. Dress kind of hands, too. So, ladies... Monday morning, march down to your grocer and ask for that bright green package of dress. The famous Procter & Gamble name is on every package. So don't get left, get dressed. And now back to the life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. Well, it's the day of Babs' dinner at which she is supposed to entertain her teacher, Professor Cartwright, and her very social classmate, Helene Bidwell. Being hostess at this home-cooked dinner is part of the home economics course at high school, and the rules say that mother can't help. However, the rules forgot father, who right now is entering a second-hand shop in search of a mahogany dining room table. Hey, anybody here? Peek-a-boo, Mr. Riley. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it ain't my little neighbor, Waldo Vinny. What are you doing here, Waldo? I ran away from my wife and came in here to hide. Oh. Well, you didn't get away with it, Waldo. I see your wife followed you in. Where? Where? Why, there. Ain't that your wife standing in the corner there? Oh, no. That's an Egyptian mummy. <laughs> Not quite as old as my wife. Yeah. 
too dark in here to see good. Hey, Walter, where's Pops Fazuli? Well, Mr. Fazuli had to go out, so I'm minding the store for him. Anything I can do for you? Well, Babs is throwing a party, extra special stylish, and I want some stuff to go with the occasion. Well, we've got some fine antiques here. Well, now, there's a thing over there I need. A good-looking dining room table. It's mahogany, too. Yes, but you wouldn't want that. It's a movie prop. It was a mo- in the movie called Madness in Monte Carlo. Madness in Monte Carlo? I, I never heard of that picture. It was that regrettable for us. Well, just the same. It's a beautiful table. Babs would love it. But it's a gambling table. No kidding. Yeah. You see, right now, it doesn't look like a gambling table. But look, I trip this cap here and watch. Well, well, what do you know? The top turns itself over and now it's a roulette table with the wheel and all. Yeah, and vice versa. See, I trip the catch once more and presto. Well, 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 now it's a dining table again. Clever, isn't it? Waldo, with this I can kill two birds with one stone. You see, after dinner, Babs needs a game to play instead of bridge, so... <laughs> now I got a very swanky game like in Monte Carlo, only we just play for matches. That's a very good idea. I love gambling. You gamble, Waldo? Oh, yes, I'm a devil. <laughs> but over in Ocean Park, all the old ladies call me Bingo Benny. Listen, Waldo, have Crops Fazuli deliver that table right away. Now I gotta go over and see my pal Digger Odell, the undertaker. Uh, nothing professional, I hope. Oh, <laughs> no. I'm just borrowing one of his tuxedos to wear. He's got them in all sizes. <laughs> and he's lending me a book of witty sayings. It'll give me a fair kind of chatter for Babs' party. Oh, say, that reminds me. I need a library, too. Lots of books. Well, there's some fine books over here on this table. Now, this pile is Francis Bacon. And this is William Shakespeare. And this pile is Charles Lamb. Well, how do you think Fazuli rents out these books? Well, I don't know. Well, I'm in a hurry. Wrap me up five pounds of Shakespeare, five pounds of lamb, and a half a pound of bacon. Professor and Helene to be here. Oh, Mother, I'm as nervous as a cat. Now, Babsy, everything's going to be fine. How's the dining room look? Well, I don't know. Daddy's in there and he won't let me in until he's all finished. Well, everything's set. Daddy! Riley! You're wearing a tuxedo. Yes, sir. How do I look? Well, fine, but a tuxedo. Aren't you overdoing things a little? No. Bab said Mr. Bidwell wore one of these monkey suits. Well, believe me, it looks more natural on me. <laughs> Oh, it's very smart, Daddy. It makes you look much thinner. Oh. How's it feel? Well, oh, fine, but how long can a man go without breathing? <laughs> There's only one thing wrong. No cuffs on the pants. But that's the style. Uh, it ain't practical. Where'll I put my prune pistol? <laughs> Still, I can't kick Digger loaned it to me. And this little book came with it. Free. Oh, what's the book, dear? Oh, full of woody, witty sayings and wise remarks. Whatever somebody says, this book gives you a comeback to it. I learned one of them by heart, too. Well, what is it, Daddy? Well, first, somebody has to say something about dinner. Well, when everything's ready, I'll say, dinner is served. Okay, then I say, let's see, oh, yeah, here it is. Speaking of dinner, it's an established fact that the ancient Egyptians always had a skeleton sitting at the table at a feast. A skeleton? Yeah, let me finish this. It was to remind them that life is fleeting, hence the saying, a skeleton at the feast. How's that? Well, it's... It's educational, dear, but a bit depressing. Yes, sir, everybody's going to remember this night. <laughs> well, can we see the dining room now? Yeah, sure, I got it all set. Well, real classy, huh? Why, Daddy, it looks fine. Oh, it's lovely. Yeah, mahogany table, candlesticks, lace doilies, and everything. From now on, the Rileys will be just like society people. Only we'll keep on working. <laughs> And wait till after dinner. That table's got a surprise to it. It's dinner. Oh, the early. Oh, hurry, Daddy, answer the door. No, you go. I want to get caught reading a good book. Well, I've got to, I've got to take the roast out of the oven. I'll do that, dear. You two go to the door. Oh, all right. Back me up, Daddy. Yeah, no, 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 no. Let's, let's see. The ancient gypsies had red skeletons for dinner. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm all set. Open the door. Good evening, Helene. Good evening, Professor Cartwright. How are you, Beth? Hello, Barbara. Good evening. Good evening. Come on in. Oh, uh, Professor Cartwright, my father. Riley's the name. Put it there, Professor. Oh, how do you do, sir? Well, this is a cozy home you have here, Mr. Riley. Well, thank you. Only 19 years more and it's ours. 
Okay, I hope you both brung your appetites with you. Bad six of feed that would choke a horse. I, I mean, two horses. Daddy. I mean, a horse and a man. <laughs> but, sit down, folks. Make yourself comfortable. Ah, I see. Something smells mightily good. You're rightly. <laughs> able to eat anything. Food is so boring. Oh, Helene, you will have something. Yeah, Helene, don't be no skeleton at the fiesta. <laughs> skeleton? Really? Oh, yes, indeed, Helene. Mr. Riley refers to the fact that the ancient Egyptians seated a skeleton at their feast to remind them that life was fleeting, hence the saying, a skeleton at the feast. <laughs> Well, that one's all shut. <laughs> Babs, my book of witty sayings, where did it go? I don't know, Dad. I gotta find that I only learned one hunk of knowledge. Well, good evening, Helene. Bonsoir, Mrs. Riley. And uh, this must be Professor Cartwright. How do you do, Mrs. Riley? I'm so glad you could come. Well, Babs, I, I suppose you guess they're hungry. Shall we go into the dining room, dear? Yeah. Oh, the door. Come in. Who is it? It is I. Digby Odell, the friendly undertaker. <laughs> well, come on in, Digger. Say hello to the folks. Greetings, one and all. You're looking fine. Very natural. <laughs> Digger, this is Miss Helene Bidwell. Helene, Mr. Odell. How do you do? How do you do, Miss Bidwell? Uh, Bidwell, I knew your grandfather. Really? Yes. Of course, I only met him once. <laughs> we went for a long drive into the country together. Grandfather was so witty. Everyone who ever met him always quoted him. He didn't say a word on this trip. <laughs> and this is Professor Cartwright, Digger. He teaches mathematics at the high school. Oh, yes, Professor. Then you tutor my son, Lost Bank. Yes, I do indeed, sir. Excellent student, your boy. He's just fine at handling figures. That's my boy, all right. <laughs> so, we, uh, we were just going to sit down to dinner, Mr. Odell. So I see. Uh, I like the way the table is laid out. <laughs> so if you'll excuse us, Sigurd. Oh, go right ahead. I'm not saying. Babs, I knew you were having a party, so I thought you might like to have these flowers. They're my favorite kind. Crocus. <laughs> Well, as an amateur horticulturist, may I compliment you on these blooms, Mr. Odell? Thank you, Professor. Glad to meet a comrade of the soil. <laughs> as we say in my profession, you may not like flowers at first, but eventually they'll grow on you. <laughs> well, thanks for dropping in, Digger, but dinner's on the table and we didn't exactly plan on you. I won't keep you any longer. I don't want to be a skeleton at the feast. You know the ancient Egyptians. Yeah, we know. <laughs> we all know that one. By the way, Riley, that suit looks well on you. Almost as well as it did on... Thanks, Digger. Thanks. <laughs> but your tie, it's not tied properly. Shall I tie it for you? Well, I... It'll only take a moment. Now, let's see, uh... You'll have to lie down. <laughs> <laughs> that digger always kidding. <laughs> well, we, we won't wait for you, Riley. Uh, Professor Cartwright and Miss Bidwell, should we go in? Farewell, Professor. Oh, good night, Mr. Odell. It's been a pleasure seeing you, and I trust that we'll meet again. We shall, believe me. <laughs> well, let's go into the dining room. Don't be too long, Riley. Oh, yeah. Well, I hate to rush you, Digger. I understand, you. Riley. We all have to go sometime. <laughs> well... Curio, I'd better be shoveling off. We're waiting for you. Uh, I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming. Listen, if anybody sees a little book laying around... Time enough I... for literature after dinner, Mr. Riley. Ah, this is a lovely table. Ooh, and that roast makes my mouth water. How peculiar, that. Everything on the table at once. Oh, real home style, eh, Barbara? Yes, and quite proper when there are no servants, Helene. Daddy, will you carve the roast? Well, where's Daddy? Riley. I, I mean, Chester. Where are you? 
Chester, what are you looking for under the table? Oh, I'm just trying to find my book. I see... Oh, I see it. Oh, get up, Chester. Yeah, okay, okay. Now, l- listen, Helene. You, you got your foot near a little trigger under the table, see? Don't touch that. Trigger? Yeah, it's just here that I'm touching with my foot, see? One little push on that and... <laughs> oh! That's the rose! The rose! I got it! I've got it! It landed on Miss Bidwell. Oh! What a revolting development this is. <laughs> oh, Riley, what happened? But a table, those numbers, and a wheel. What kind of a table is this? Well, I, 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 I'd rather not say, but, but, but seeing that dinner is over, would anyone care for a rubber of roulette? <laughs> Back in a moment. Now, here's a suggestion. If you'd like a longer, lovelier life for your nice washables, join the march to Dress. It's America's largest selling brand for washing soaps, nylons, woolens, dishes. And no wonder, for Dress gives brighter, fresher, safer cleaning than any previous suds in history. Yes, nightly dressing will make stockings look lovelier and wear longer. And new woolens washed in Dress will come out softer, brighter, fluffier than with even expensive soap flakes. Lingerie colors, too, stay sparkling and gay longer than with any soap. So start now to enjoy the advantages of dress, Procter & Gamble's miracle suds for your nice things. Ask for dress in the bright green package. Don't get less, get dress. Have some more pie, Professor Cartwright? Oh, no, thank you. Really, three pieces is my limit. (laughs) Well, it was nice of you to eat the roast after... Oh, nonsense. The bot roast wasn't harmed at all. Sure, it only bounced once. <laughs> it didn't bounce. Elaine caught it before it hit the floor. Yes, right in her lap. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, the Riley's had a skeleton at the feast, but she went home. And you know something? She sure looks good dressed in gravy. <laughs> <laughs> Makers of Dress, the trudging miracle for silks, nylons, woolens, dishes. Invite you to be their guests next week to hear The Life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. The Life of Riley is produced by Irving Brecker and is directed by Don Bernard. Music by Lou Kozlov. The script, written by Reuben Shep and Alan Lipscott. Mrs. Riley is Paula Winslow. Digger Odell is John Brown. Babs is Barbara Eiler. Professor Cartwright is Joe Kearns. Waldo is Dink Trout. And Helene is Peggy Weber. This is Ken Carpenter inviting you to listen again next week to The Life of Riley and reminding you, for faster, brighter, safer cleaning than any previous suds in history, use dress. Don't get left, get dressed. Say, what put the gleam in his eye? The gleam in her hair. And what put the gleam in her hair? Prell, P-R-E-L-L. Procter & Gamble's new Emerald Clear Radiant Cream Shampoo in the handy tube. Prell reveals a radiant, gleaming beauty no soap or soap shampoo can equal. And Prell leaves hair so easy to manage. Radiantly soft, radiantly lovely. Prell removes embarrassing dandruff in as little as three minutes, a fact proved by a group of doctors. Even stubborn dandruff was controlled by only two Prell shampoos a week. And a little Prell makes mountains of lather. And say, the whole family goes for that handy Prell tube. Yes, no messy jars, no slippery bottles. Try the new radiant cream shampoo, Prell. P-R-E-L-L, Prell shampoo. Leaves hair radiant, gleaming bright. Not a bit of dandruff is in sight. Comes in a tube, handy too. P-R-E-L-L, Prell shampoo. Yes, try Prell. Listen again next week when Dress, the surging miracle for soaks, nylons, woolen dishes, brings you the life of Riley. Good night. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.